We are in crunch time with this new build out. It's in, we are literally in crunch time. I'm, I'm getting everything prepared. People are coming and going, getting ready for inspections and stuff like that. So just keep praying for us that God would move. All right. What I want to do is I want everyone to stand up. Real quick, find a partner. Don't stay right where you're at. Stay close to where you're at. Find a partner. Two or three of you, whatever. I want you to face each other. And I want you to speak Jesus over each other. You have a word? Give a word. You have a scripture? Give a scripture. But speak Jesus over someone right now. Yeah. Yeah. Speak Jesus over all of you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you guys for that. You could be seated. Hallelujah. It's a good morning. Sun is shining. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to talk to you about three things this morning. First thing is, he gets the glory. Okay. Always. He gets the glory. The second thing is, we must get low. We must go low. And we must learn how to shine in a way that all of it goes back to him. Because you are going to shine. When Jesus is fully flowing through you and in you, you are going to shine. You're going to have to learn how to deal with that. Your name is going to be up in lights. You're going to have to learn how to deal with that to where he gets all the glory for that, where he gets everything. And in doing that, it's going to, it's going to be going low, staying low, keeping low. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 28, verse 18. Starting at verse 18. I have a lot of different scriptures I'm going to go through today, so I'm not going to have you stand. Matthew 28, starting at verse 18. And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All authority has been given unto me. Jesus has all authority in heaven and in earth. And this is what he's telling them to do. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And then he says, Lo, not lo, but lo, I'm with you always, even till the ends of the earth. I want you to know this morning that Jesus has all authority and he has given all authority to us. To do the things he's commanded us to do. Live the life he's commanded for us to live. Walk in the ways he's commanded for us to live. To where he gets the glory. And in this passage here, it says that he come down low. He come down here and he says, lo, I am with you always. And sometimes we're going to go and sometimes they're going to come. Jesus came to a point that he came so low that he come to a fetal position. He got so low that he got in this fetal position to present himself to us in a baby form. And then he didn't stop there because you remember he went and he went even lower when he died on the cross. He didn't stop at earth he kept going lower to get at the heart of the earth. So he got way down low, and he got real low, and he got clear down this low in the depths of the earth that you and I could be saved, that you and I could have all of heaven, that you and I could shine. 
and the glory of God would shine through us. My question is this morning, how low will you go? How low are you willing to go to see a people saved? How low are you willing to go to see people burn for Jesus? Because we have to get really low. You've ever run from the law, and I have. There were times that I got so low because I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to be seen by the authority so they could grab a hold of me and take me to jail. I didn't want to be seen, so I went low. And Jesus come to get low, not in the form that I did, but to get low in a humbling way so we could be raised up, so he could shine through us, so he could shine in us. How many of you ever go out at night and watch the sun, the moon, the stars? In the night, watch the, the moon and the stars at night. I love to watch the moon and the stars. And the stars, they have a light within themselves and they shine. But the moon does not have any light of its own. And as I had the privilege to minister with Pastor Todd this past week in southern Indiana, I woke up and I was leaving like five in the morning and, this, and the moon was out and it, just, it was just a bright, but it was just a half of a moon. And the Lord showed me how the enemy will stand in the light of God and, just, and it'll shine and make himself look super bright, but his backside's as dark as dark to where it's almost not even seen. And if the enemy turns around, his back is lit up, but his front is not seen. Any way he turns, only when he stands in the light will he shine from the light reflecting off of him. But he reminded me that the sun is that light that comes within, that's that light that is boiling within burning within and it shines out to all people. And Jesus came and he went and I guarantee he's coming again. But it's for a people that are purified in him. A people that are clean and cleansed of all their sin, of all their infirmities, of all the things that they live in that's not of heaven. So again, I ask you, what will it take for you to get low and get to the heart of your matters, the stuff that you're dealing with? Because the next passage we're going to read, and Isaiah talks about this, when we learn how to get low and get completely healed of everything that is going on in our life, it will draw a people to us. They will want to know what is going on in you. What is different in you that, that is different in me? What do you have that I don't have? And they will be drawn to that. And we have come to a place such as this, this city. God has called us here. There's a time to go out into all the nations of the world and minister. But there's also a time to be in a place and stay and minister there. Because there's a people that are going to come like we have gone into this place. There's going to be a people that come to this place because they see what we have. And that's the healing that we have in our lives. That's what's going to draw them. The Jesus that's in us that can overcome our sin, that can overcome the things in our life, our infirmities, our failures, our faults. They're going to be drawn to that. We don't want them drawn to a person even though they will come to that person first. They're going to be drawn to who we are and whose we are. They're going to recognize there's something about us that's not like them. And they're going to want that. They're going to come from all over to see that. Shelley talked about this morning. That healing can happen. That can happen in a deliverance meeting. That can happen in the water. That can happen at the altar. That can happen out in the streets. But healing is going to happen. People are going to be touched. People are going to be saved because we have gotten to a place that we are full of everything that God has for us. You have your Bibles turn to Isaiah chapter 60. Starting in verse 1, it says, 
Isaiah chapter 60, starting in verse 1, it says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the deep darkness the people. That is talking about a depression that is over the people. If you're depressed, watch this. Jesus is going to shine in that depression and bring you out of it. If you'll let him, if you'll let him, there's a people, there's a hurting world of people that is sitting in depression, caught up in the world. My cousin just got word this week. I was, when I was down there with Todd, got word that my cousin um, was found in the woods dead, um, running from the cops. But the reason he was running from the cops is because he was, he overdosed on drugs. But the reason he was running from the cops was because his life's a mess. His life's in turmoil. And when your life is that way, devastation will come. That's why it's so important that we get sold out to Jesus. We get on fire for him, doing the things that he's called us to do. And it says, a deep darkness to the people, but the Lord, listen, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. It says, the Gentiles come to your light. Listen, the Gentiles come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. That's saying that there's going to be people come from all over the place to see what God is doing in you because he is upon you and shining from you. That's what that's saying, that he is... He has created a way for you to shine and be in the light as he is in the light. And that we get no glory for it. That all goes to him. So learning how to walk in the light as he is in the light, but yet we get no glory for any of the light that shines through us or upon us. They will come from all over. And they will come because we're healed of brokenness. Ube, have you been healed of brokenness? People draw to you. Yeah. Jimmy, people draw to you. Jimbo's probably got more people drawn to him than, than any of us. We're going to talk about David. And see, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. He came from heaven to earth, and he went to the heart. He looks at the heart of the matter, because when you get to the heart of the thing, the root of the thing, things happen. And Jimbo has gotten to that place. I mean, this guy is an amazing man of God. On the outside, it looks like John the Baptist. But his heart is so for Jesus. And he goes to, when he's in Indianapolis, the, the, the homeless crowd, the people that are drawn to him, to have what he has. And he shares the word of God. And people get saved. Thank you, Jimmy. People get touched because of that. Some of you are in the same position. You're in a position that healing has come in your life. And because of the healing, people are drawn to you and they come to you for answers to their questions, answers to the problems that they have because you are healed. They're after healing. People are after healing of their mind, will, and their emotions, their soul, man. People are after healing this morning. They want to see victory in their lives, but they don't know how to get it. And then when they get it, they don't know how to obtain it. They think it's just you can come in and get saved, and that's good. It's not just that. We must live for Jesus. Our lives must change for him. And if we come in and we grab a hold of that, or grab a hold of a little bit of that and say some words and get down here and spew it, and, you, and we say, God, come into my life, live in my heart, but we have no, nothing after it that follows that's when, the, that's when the enemy comes back and he starts shimmying the doors. He starts checking the doors, shaking them around. 
and sin. And he'll come back to that very place that you just emptied out and asked Jesus to be a part of your life. He'll see it emptied out, and he'll come and he'll bring seven times the demonic back to that place. I want to remind you, if you're a Christian, the enemy cannot possess you. But he can oppress you. He can make your life a living hell. And he does for most people. We've seen it across the board, how he does that. So I encourage you this morning, if you're not right with Jesus, to get right with him. I encourage you this morning, if you've not humbled yourself and gotten low, to get all the healing that heaven has for you, I encourage you to grab it. If your soul's fractured, I encourage you this morning to bring those fractures together in your soul, man, be healed this morning. It's so important that we are completely healed because in our healing, they're going to see that and they're going to come from all over the world to see what God is doing in this place, in this place. So Jesus came, came, he went, he's coming back. In this story here, in Isaiah, it says that kings are going to come. They've established a place and kings are coming to that place. We've established a place. We're establishing a new place. There's going to be people come from all over the place. The Life of Love Ministry Center. Not that it's about our ministry only, but because of we're established here and you guys are established with us, there's going to, things are going to happen. We should be the ruling factor in this city. Not the mayor's not the councilman, the church should be the ruling factor in the city. We should be what changes things. They just get to govern a solid people who are on fire for Jesus. They get to govern that. But we should be the ones in charge because of who we are and who we are in him. So in this story, people came from all over. Because of the brightness that Jesus has risen up in us. We are the light that Jesus talks about that sets on a hill. We're the salt of the earth. Turn to Matthew 5, chapter 13. Matthew 5, chapter 13, it says, chapter 5, verse 13 through 16, you're the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, listen, and stop there for a minute. If the salt loses its flavor or savor, in the Bible times, they would just throw it out in the street, and the men would trample over it. It says, if it loses its savor, how shall it be seasoned? It's good for nothing but to be trod out and trampled under the foot of man. I don't want to be trampled under the foot of man. I want my salt to be savory. I want it to be flavorsome. I want to be able to sprinkle on whatever, and it brings life to that situation. That's how we're supposed to operate. That's how we're supposed to live. Not to be, not to have some salt and then we, we, we let it just get um, old and nasty and stale and then it's just, they just throw it out and it's good for nothing. But to be trod over by the foot of man. We're not supposed to live that kind of a life. When we get on fire for Jesus, we're supposed to stay on fire. We're supposed to live out of our overflow. But because of the woundness, we can't even get to the overflowing point. Because we're living out of woundedness. But when we start living out overflow, people are going to come from all over the world. And they're going to see that. And they're going to want that. We have to be ready for them. We have to be ready to present that to them and give them what, what their hearts desire, which is what the Lord put in us. And that's to be completely healed. You're the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid, nor do they light a lamp and hide it under a bushel or a basket but put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light so shine before men. Your light will shine before men. Jesus inside you. 
And in that light, they will glorify him. The light shines through us. It's going to. But they're going to glorify him. When you see, when they see your name in light, really what they're going to see is Jesus. Some of you might one day have your names in light. And when, when you do, I hope that they see that and they see Jesus in that. It's so vital. Doing it in a way that he gets all the glory. When we go low, listen. When we humble ourselves, he will take us places we've never dreamed that we would ever go. He would do things with us that we never dreamed that he could ever do. I remember the first time that I went to to Honduras. I sold my favorite guitar just so I could go and see. And I cried the whole time I was there because the people had nothing, yet they rejoiced. And I thought, wow, I complained over a cheeseburger being made wrong at McDonald's. And they had nothing. And yet their smiles were bigger than I've ever seen. Their teeth were wider than I've ever seen, probably because they don't have all the candy to rot their teeth out. Then over in Haiti, I've gotten to see people over there that are on fire for Jesus. When you go to a meeting, and you have to say at the meeting, if you're at this meeting, you can't come back to the, tonight's meeting because we've got to make room for the next group. If I would say that in this meeting, I'd say, hey, we're having a meeting tonight, but you guys can't come back. You guys would be like, thank God. <laughs> not you guys, just in general. I'm not talking about you guys. I'm just saying in general. <laughs> Don't hear what I'm not saying. But over in other countries, because they're so hungry for that, they literally will, they literally will come to every meeting if they're allowed to. Down by the thousands, by the thousands, because they want, they want to be free. They want to be free. He'll take you places that you never thought you'd be able to go. I never thought as a druggie, as a drug dealer, as a, as a heathen that I was. I'm an ex-heathen now. But I never thought I would ever be in a place like this doing what I'm doing right now. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think of this. And I'm humbled. And I want you to know I want to be low. I want to get lower every day to, so as to create the atmosphere for him to flow in. I want my prayer life to be strong. You guys pray for me that my prayer life gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And I pray for you guys that your prayer life will get strong. That your wounds are healed. Imagine if all of us were totally healed and in overflow. Some of you go and minister to people in your woundedness and it's not as effective as it could be because you're ministering to them out of woundedness. Because you speak the name of Jesus, things happen because through the name of Jesus, things are going to happen. You know. But imagine speaking the name of Jesus, being whole, being free from all sin, being free from all bondage, from all the things you battle and struggle with. Imagine ministering to a people anywhere you go, being in that state of mind. Because what I'm seeing across the board is, is that when you minister out of a wounded heart, you're limiting who God is. And they see that. They see and they say, wow, this is all, this is all I can get. This is as far as I can go. You want them to see you in such a way that they say, wow, I can get there. I can do that. I can be that. That's what you want. That's what you want for them to see. 
You guys remember David and Samuel? A lot of crazy things happened with the whole David, King David story. But when he first was established, he was a young boy that was out in the field. No one noticed him. No one at all noticed him. What happened? When Samuel came, Samuel was kind of scared because he was told to go anoint one of David's son or one of Jesse's sons. So he goes and he's like, well, how am I going to do that? He goes, so they have this way they're going to get there and do it and, and, and do a sacrifice and invite them to the sacrifice and make it all, you know, just sneaky Jesus. That's how he does it sometimes. So they go and you got all these you got these men. I'm gonna, we're 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 gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna grab seven men here. Can you come up? You don't mind coming up? Just we don't have to say anything. You're just gonna come up. And we're gonna do we're gonna do seven men. So so he comes up and, and he sees this stud of a man. You know, and uh, um, Samuel sees him. He's like, man, this is this this has got to be him. Look at this look at this guy. He's amazing, man. He's like, look at him. And, she, and listen. And, and, uh, and God, God says, no, that's not the one. And you can stay up here. And then he grabs this guy here. He goes, the other next time he grabs him. He's like, man, look at this one, man. He's like, he's going to tear into him. And he says, no, no, no. Can you come up? You don't want to come? Come on. He says, look at this one. Wow. He is a star. You know what? He said, no. You three come up here. Jimmy, you stay down. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. Come here. Come here. We got seven? Yeah, come here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get up here. He says, no, none of these. As studly as they are, as muscular as they are, as vibrant as they are, as, as solid as they are, no. You guys can sit down. He said, there's got to be, there's got to be. Do you have another son? Well, yeah, I have my little son out in the field who's tending to the flocks. And all of a sudden, he says, well, get him. He says, we're not going to do this thing. We're not going to sit here and do this until you get him. This is talking about someone who was low and out of sight and out of mind, yet God lifted him up to be a king. When we get so low, God's going to lift us up high. That's his desire for us to be on high, to live low and be on high. So then you get... Then he says, call him in. So you get David right here. It's Jimmy, Jimbo. David. We're going to call him David. Look, he's even got some of the red hair to match. He's, he's even got the red hair to match it. And so you've got, you got this guy, this kid, you know, he's, he's stunning. You know, he's, he's, he's just, he's well to look at, but he's just a little bitty guy. And, uh, you know, he just glowed, his red hair glowed. The Bible talks about his hair. Boy, they did know this, this guy here killed some beast out in the field protecting the flock protecting the flock so he anointed this guy that got so low that said I want everything that you have father when he was out in the field praying when no one was around looking he was calling on the name of Jesus when no one was around looking he didn't just walk into church and he did the whole church thing stay there a minute the whole church thing. I'm here. You know, you, you fought all the way to church and then you got to church like, hey, how are you guys doing? You know, listen, just so you know, you can see it on you. So God's people can see things on people. So just so you know, when you're out in the parking lot and you're like tearing each other apart and then you walk into church, and, hey, yeah, you, you can see that. So my, my suggestion to you is stay in the parking lot long enough to break that off. And, and that way you don't have to come in and feel like, hey, yeah, what's going on with them? Wow, they're like, in a, you, know, they, you know they were fighting before they come into church. You can see it all over them. And just to clear that up. So this man 
got so low as to stay low on his face. On his face to see the feet of on his, at his on his face at the feet of Jesus to see the face of Jesus. When you do that, watch how high he takes you. Watch at the levels that he's going to take you, places you've never been, things you've never thought possible to happen in your life are going to happen. Thank you, Jimmy, for souping that low to get where you are today. You. Keep rising. Thank you. So we anointed him with oil. He became king. He, 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 was young. he was a young boy. He went to Saul, and he prayed over him because he had all this stuff going on in his mind, and he, and he, and he played the, the harp, and healing happened. Then he went and danced naked and did all this stupid stuff and saw a woman on a roof and, you know, did all this stuff there and all the all this stuff that he did. But still, he was labeled as a man after God's own heart. God's not looking at your faults and failures. He's looking at where you're going. He don't see you as you see you when you look in the mirror. He sees you how he created you to be an amazing sons and daughters. Just know that. Know that that's how he sees you. And nothing you do is going to surprise him because he knows all things. But what we must do is get ourselves right, cleanse from within our brokenness heal, our wounded soul brought together in a way that people are drawn to us to see him. Listen, they're going to be drawn to us to see him. Not to see us, but to see him. So are you willing this morning to get that low? But all, all your wounds are healed. All your emptiness is full of Jesus. All your fractures are brought together. Your soul man is restored. Your mind, will, and emotions are restored to where you don't have to live out of different parts of your life, different fractures that you were broken in, different places that you were hurt in, different places that someone messed you up in. Some of us live in those fractures. Some of us live in that woundedness. And we can't become whole because we stay there in that woundedness. I'm telling you right now, we have to be healed of those things. In order to step in what we're getting ready to step into, which is, which is going to be over the top, we have to be ready. We have to be that draw that brings them in because of our healing. So who's ready for the draw? So right now, I just encourage you right now, I'm going to keep talking, but I encourage you as I'm talking, turn the ambient up a little bit. I'm going to encourage you to, if you raise your hand, come forward. And we're going to pray. We're going to just, just, just get as low as you can go. Because listen, get as low. Lay on the floor. I don't care. Get as low as you can go. Get to the, get down there because this is what we got to do to see this thing happen. This is what we got to do. We got to get this low to see this thing happen, to draw a people from their sin, from their lifestyle into a place that is on fire. Promise you, he's going to take you places you've never been. You're going to see things you've never saw before. Martinsville will shake for Jesus because we are in one accord. Martinsville will shake for him because we are in one accord. Because we are in right standing with him, Martinsville will shake. It says, go out to the highways and the byways. Go into all the world. Make disciples. This is the highways and byways. This is all of the world. Where you're at right now is where you're called to be. So in this calling that you're at, you're, you're in a nation, the United States of America. 
You're in a city, Martinsville, Indiana. Plug into that place. Be living out of overflow. And in that, watch what happens. Father, we thank you this morning that we get to be a people that are on fire for you. We get to be a people that love you. We get to be a people that serve you. Father, we get to be a people that can shine. And in that shining, you get all the glory. In that shining, the, all the glory goes to you. Father, they might come to us because of what they see. But what they see is you in us. I thank you, Lord, for your people getting low this morning. For seeking your face. For being humble. I speak healing over every one of you this morning. Any wounded place in your heart, I speak healing over that this morning. And we empty out everything that's not of heaven that's in your lives right now. But we're not going to keep it empty. We're going to fill it up of everything that heaven has for you. When the enemy comes, that door will be locked. He can't get through it. And if he opens the door, he's going to see the glory of God. He's going to shut it real quick again. That's what I'm believing for your lives. None of this is about me. None of this is about my wife. It's not about you. It's about him and what he's doing. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Can we just rest here a minute? Let him have his way. He's melting away every hurt. Everything that's been done wrong to you, that was out of your will, out of your hands. Healing is happening right now. Living out of overflow is what we're called to do. Drinking from the saucer. Let your light so shine before men when you're in a grocery store. When you're at a gas station, when you're driving and someone cuts you off, let your light shine before men that they will see your good works and they will glorify Him. 